My dear journal, the big day is approaching in a few weeks. I will receive the sacrament of confirmation. I am so happy. I will have a new responsibility. To be a witness of the love of Jesus, you must know, my dear journal, that sometimes I am a little afraid to express all this to everyone. I'm afraid of not being understood. My mother always tells me that I shouldn't worry about the judgment of others. God gives each of us talents that make us unique and give us the strength to express them. For example, I love to read, write, and do researches. So that's why I decided to make a special research and preparation of my confirmation. I want to discover and learn more about the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit that they told us about in Catechism. After some preliminary studies, I'm convinced that the Cathedral of Mary Queen of the World and St. James Major is the right place to discover the seven gifts. Why? Because this is where the meeting of the young confirmants normally take place, so the seven gifts must be here. This year we will not be able to gather here, it's a pity, but we will be connected through the prayer. My dear journal, you are with me today. I will write down everything during my research. Hello. Oh, good afternoon, Bishop Rufin. You seem to be looking for something. Yes, in fact, I have given myself a special mission today. I want to seek the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'm preparing for confirmation, and I want to better understand the seven gifts. You really are at the right place. The cathedral and the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, it goes hand in hand. Oh, great. I thought I was in the right place, too. But I don't know where to start, Bishop Lupin. Could you please help me in my search? In the cathedral, we can look uh, for the gifts of the Holy Spirit through the Bible, through the sacraments, but also through history. And there's a lot of history in this cathedral. So what is your name? Emily. So Emily, let me show you what they did the first thing, the first time they came. Great. Emily, as you know, Jesus is present in the Blessed Sacrament, and that's why we come and visit Him and pray Him. But at the same time, it reminds us of something, the first thing that happened when Montreal was founded, uh, which is very unique. So the founders, they come here, they want to found the city, a new city, and what do they do? Normally, they would construct something, but that's not what they do. The first thing they do as they come out, of their boat and they come on the island, they, they celebrate Mass and they take time for adoration and they pray to the Holy Spirit to invoke His gifts. Yeah. And Montreal really began with that because those who came here were baptized and confirmed and they had the sense of mission to make known the love of God and it is very unique to the city of Montreal. It was founded to make known the love of God. I didn't know that. That's cool. A city to make God's love known. And how did the foundation of Montreal happen? It began, of course, it was in 1642, and it began before because it had to be prepared. It's around 1634, 35, that a man in France, from Jérôme Le Royaume, Sieur de la Deux-Versières, as he was praying, he had this vision, this, this idea, this project that came into his heart to found a new city, which would be called uh, Ville Marie, Arianapolis, the city of Mary, and uh, whose main object, and it was very precise, it was to be founded on, this, on the island of Montreal, with the aim of uh, evangelizing, making known the love of Jesus Christ through the whole of the continent. So it's a very inspiring moment. Jérôme Le Royer de la Dauphessière is my name. I was born in France in the small town of La Flèche. When I was a student in college, I was in spirituality groups. We were involved in prayer and in charity work for the poor and the sick. Prayer has always accompanied me in my life. I lived in a time when there were missionary trips across the ocean to a new land called Canada. One day in 1634, while praying, I had an inspiration, a vision of a project to found a missionary city on the island of Montreal for the express purpose of proclaiming 
and living the good news with the native peoples, living side by side in communal harmony, as in the time of the early church, and serving their basic needs by establishing a hospital there. People said it was a crazy undertaking, one that only a king could afford. I had children and a wife, and to pursue this vision, I risked my finances and property. But I continued with my inspiration. I worked very hard to find the money necessary to organize everything, and God, through the Holy Spirit, put on my path people available to go on mission and friends to help me. It was first Paul Chamedy, the Maisonneuve, and Jean Mance. They crossed the ocean by boat to found a missionary city on the island of Montreal. Emily, you might think that Jérôme de Royer came here because he had the idea of founding Montreal, but actually didn't come here. What he did, he gathered people in France, gathered resources to prepare people to come here and, and for the foundation of uh, Ville-Marie, for the foundation of Montreal. And he found different people. Among them, there was Maisonneuve, Paul Chemedy de Maisonneuve, there was Jean Mans, uh, who were very important for the project. And they came with a team of people, of, and they were all young people, young men and women in their 20s. You might find that astonishing today, but they had the youth, they had the energy, they had the faith, they had the love. Uh, they wanted to build something in their lives and they wanted to make the world better, a better place. So they, so they came here and they wanted to be part of that adventure to make the love uh, of God known throughout the world, beginning here. I did not know the story of Monsieur de la Duvossière. It is an inspiring story. Do you have an idea of what would be his greatest gift? I think he had wisdom because he was able to understand a message from God. You're right, because we, without wisdom, we're not sure what to do. And surely he had this wisdom and this vision that came, but we, maybe we could have he had understanding because he had to explain his vision and the gift of understanding helped him to explain his vision. He didn't uh, convince everyone, but enough people to come here. And for others, it was like they would say it's a crazy thing to go and find Montreal, uh, Ville Marie on the island of Montreal. It, uh, many people thought it was a crazy thing but he, was, uh, he had wisdom and understanding and he, he, could, he could get the attention and I would see the heart of uh, young men and women who wanted to believe in founding Montreal. Great, I'm ready to continue the search. Bishop Lapine, what are the stories of Jean Mans and de Maisonneuve? It's a very important question because Jean Mans and Maisonneuve, why did they come here? Well, it's because Jérôme Le Royer met them and he talked with them about his project. But they were, he was a soldier, but his heart was full of uh, the love of Christ. Uh, she was a nurse. Her heart was full of the love of Christ. So somehow, both of them meeting uh, through, through families and through friends, they think Jérôme Le Royer their heart was burning with desire when he was with Jérôme Roy, he was talking with them about the foundation of Montreal and it answered the call, the desire that they have because a youth is full of a thirst to make the world a better place and they had this thirst and, uh, and God called them to come here and uh, consecrate their lives, a man and a woman, uh, to come here and found Montreal. In my youth, I joined the French army. At the age of 13, I participated in the War of Holland in 1625. In 1639, Jérôme Le Royer de la Dauversière and Jean-Jacques Collier founded the Société de Notre-Dame de Montréal in order to establish a missionary colony in New France. Sometime after that, I was chosen to lead this endeavor. In May of 1641, the missionary project began when two ships left the port of La Rochelle for New France. On board were the first settlers of Montreal, Jean Mans and myself. The first ship reached Quebec City in August, but the second ship was late in arriving. 
Due to this delay, the foundation of the new settlement was postponed until the following spring. On May 17, 1642, we took possession of the island by settling at the place identified by Samuel de Champlain in 1611. And this is where we founded the settlement of Ville Marie. I then held the office of governor. Possessing important civil and military powers, I began work on the installation of the colony. The construction of Ville Marie began in 1642, and within a year, I established a fort to keep everyone safe. The fort contained a hospital, a chapel, and lodging for about 70 persons who lived there. In the winter of 1642, the river bed rose and threatened to flood the settlement. The water had risen right up to the gates of the fort. It appeared that the settlement would have to be abandoned. We had no hope and I decided to turn to prayer for the waters to recede. I prayed and promised to our Lord that if the waters would recede and the settlement was spared any damage, that I would plant a cross on the top of the mountain in memory of our faith. I instructed the priest to post a notice binding me to my word. In January of 1642, the waters did recede. No damage was done to the fort. Hence, I carried a large wooden cross up to the mountain and planted it there. I spent more than 20 years developing the colony, returning to France a few times to seek financial and material assistance. I spent more than 20 years developing the colony, returning to France a few times to seek financial and material assistance, and more importantly, to recruit new settlers. Jean Mans supported me in this extraordinary project. Her role was to administer the colony as well as creating the foundations and the management of the hospital. I am Jeanne Mans. I was born in 1606 in the northeast of France. My father was King Henry IV's public prosecutor, so we were a well-to-do family. My parents had 12 children, six boys and six girls. I was the second child. When I was 20, our mother died, so to help our father, my sister Marguerite and I looked after our younger brothers and sisters. Then when I was 24, our father died also. After his death, as my siblings grew up and became independent, I have devoted myself more and more to various works of charity. When I was 31, the European war that began in 1618 and lasted for 30 years reached our area. There were so many hurt and injured, so I enrolled to help care for them. Then we were also hit by the plague. I continued to care for the sick and dying. These experiences helped me grow in my knowledge and capability as a nurse. One day I spoke with my cousin Nicolas, chaplain of the Sainte Chapelle in Paris. He told me about his mission in New France, in a land called Canada. For the first time, I felt a strong desire to go on a mission myself to announce God's love, even though my health was fragile. I prayed a lot, days and nights, to know what God wanted me to do. I spoke with my spiritual advisor. It was not easy. In those days, women either got married or became religious. It took a lot of time. I had to talk to several people to convince them of this mission that had taken root in my heart. Then I was introduced to Madame Angélique de Bouillon, the rich widow of a French finance minister. She asked me to go and found a hospital in Ville-Marie in New France and to be its director. She provided me with everything I needed to make it happen, and I accepted. I joined with Paul de Chamedé de Maisonneuve in the foundation of Ville-Marie on May 17, 1642. After the foundation of the hospital, L'Hôtel Dieu, I called upon the Hospitaller Sisters of St. Joseph to help me care for the sick, who were becoming more and more numerous. All were welcome in my hospital. It didn't matter who they were. 
I remained in charge of that hospital for the rest of my life. It was a very hard life for pioneers back then. We were building from scratch. People did become discouraged. I believed strongly in what we were doing, so I made three trips back to France for help to keep the missions going, and we did. I have a lot of people to thank, but first of all God, and especially the Holy Spirit, who inspired in me faith, courage, and strength to carry on with the projects. After a long illness, I died on June 18th, 1673, in Montreal, Quebec. Finally, in 2012, something very important happened. Jeanne Mans was named co-founder of Montreal. From 1642 to 2012, if you would ask someone who's the founder of Montreal, everybody would say Maisonneuve, Paul Chomedy, Sieur de Maisonneuve. But uh, with a better knowledge of history, we know that Jean Mans had such an intricate part to the foundation of Montreal that really, to be fair and just for the history of Montreal, it was uh, more precise to say that Jean Mans is co-founder of Montreal with Maisonneuve. So it was a very uh, important step in the comprehension of our own history of the foundation of Montreal. So two uh, young men and women founded Montreal. Awesome. It's cool to know the founders of Montreal. They have very inspiring stories. And they were not alone because, uh, as you know, they, they came with other people. And in 1642, they had a good team, but they, they needed help. So they would go back to France and look for help and for other people. And they, find, they found help in meeting and discovering someone uh, new, Marguerite Bourgeois. Who is Marguerite Bourgeois and what is her story? She's a young woman, early 20s, and she is full of a desire to give herself to Jesus Christ. She wants to consecrate her life to God, but at the same time, she wants to be in the world. She wants to bring the love of Jesus into the world and to the life of the youth. Uh, that's why education became very, very important for her. So it is how, how can I be consecrated to God and at the same time be in the world? And uh, that's how, and she met, uh, she heard about, the uh, Marie shared about the foundation and that's how she was asked. It was about 10 years later, so she came to Montreal. My name is Marguerite Bourgeois. I was born in France in a small village named Troyes, located in the Champagne region. Younger, I was a very curious child, and I loved studying. Thank God, my parents provided me with a very good education. When I was 20 years old, something very special happened to me while I was admiring a painting of the Virgin Mary. I saw her smiling at me, only me, and I was so touched that I asked her to counsel me and help me find my own mission a mission that would give meaning to my life. In those years in France, there were only two options for a girl like me, either get married and start raising a family or enter a religious order and become a nun. But deep down, what I wanted most was to become a school teacher and eventually I obtained my teaching degree. Meanwhile, I'd heard that a certain Paul Chomedy, Sieur de Maisonneuve, along with a good friend and collaborator, Dame Jeanne Mans, accompanied by 20 brave settlers, had crossed the Atlantic Ocean in 1642 to establish a colony here in Nouvelle France, a colony they would call Ville Marie, which was Montreal's first name. Along the St. Lawrence River, where today you might find the Pointe Acaya Museum, these settlers had built a fort, a hospital, and a few houses. But very quickly, they realized that they didn't have enough manpower to continue. Seeing this, Sieur de Maisonneuve decided to go back to France 
in order to recruit new settlers and also a school teacher who would be responsible for Ville Marie's first school. Sieur de Maisonneuve's sister, Louise, told me about this and immediately I realized that I'd found my own mission in life. Along with 100 men, I, myself, crossed the ocean and we finally arrived here in November of 1653. This expedition was called La Grande Recrue. Since at that time there weren't many children in Ville-Marie, for five years I became the fort's chief housekeeper and there I would take care of everything while, of course, still helping Jeanne Mans at the hospital. I also proposed to Sieur de Maisonneuve the building of a small chapel near the fort if he could provide me with the manpower necessary and you can still visit this chapel in Old Montreal. It's La Chapelle Notre-Dame de Bon Secours. Finally, enough children had been born in the colony to allow us to open a school, therefore accomplishing my mission here. Sieur de Maisonneuve offered me a two-story stable and with the help of three of my girlfriends, we managed to clean it up and open the very first school of Ville-Marie in April 1658. Weather permitting, we would teach outside and the kids really appreciated this. I'm proud to say that I'm the one who introduced the first blackboards in Nouvelle-France. They were called ardoises and the children enjoyed writing on them very much. In 1663, at La Maison Saint-Gabriel, I was also asked to prepare Les Filles du Roi, who had been sent here by King Louis XIV in order to marry the settlers and raise their families. In 1668, after many long procedures, I founded a religious order, La Congregation des Sœurs de Notre-Dame de Montréal, which would help my loyal girlfriends to become nuns. I, myself, chose to enter religious life two years only before the end of my life, which was, believe me, most fruitful in Nouvelle France. I have been recognized as co-founder of Ville-Marie, along with my friends, Paul and Jeanne, and even if I never had children of my own, I was given the title of La Mère de la Colonie, and that's fine with me. And if ever you seek counsel from me, I promise to do all in my power to answer your prayers. Emily, October 31st, 1982, a very significant event happened. Uh, Marguerite Bourgeois was canonized, was recognized as a saint by John Paul II. And it was very significant because it attracted the attention that the history of Montreal is filled with men and women who gave their lives to Christ and wanted to serve the community and the people and the families uh, in Montreal. And this way, and uh, there were so many. Some were are canonized, some are known, some are unknown, but it's like a consolation of sainthood. And uh, we're blessed in Montreal to have this history of sainthood that goes through all of the city. So, if, Going back to the confirmation and to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, what did you learn? What do you see as through Maisonneuve, Jeanne Mars, Marguerite Bourgeois? What gifts do you see that they had and the others had? I think that for Jeanne Mars, it is fortitude because she was a woman, lay, single, young, and in poor health. People did not believe in her desire to carry out this mission. She had to fight. And Paul Chamedy de Maisonneuve, I think, practiced the gift of fear of the Lord, because he was able to put the mission in the hands of Jesus Christ. And Marguerite Bourgeois, I think, especially practiced the gift of counsel, because through education, she helped people to discover God's plan for them. And you, Bishop Lupin, what was the gift of the Holy Spirit that led you to become a priest? I hope I have more than one gift, because I need them all. But certainly one of the gifts I've received is the, the piety, the gift of piety. Because when I was beginning to think about priesthood, it's like a spirit of prayer that came over me. And uh, a spirit of prayer, and it was uh, before Christmas, 
and the desire lasted till Holy Week, till Easter, uh, thinking about becoming a priest. So during this time, we the desire to become a priest and the desire to consecrate my life, really to uh, learn, to, to learn, to discover more and more the love of God, but uh, in the aspect of making that love known. People, maybe they believe in God, but don't, we don't always know that God loves them. So I wanted to consecrate myself to the love of God, to making known the love of God. Well, that's cool that you had an inspiration. And what is your mission as a bishop? It's a very, uh, inter I would say, powerful question. Somehow, my, I see my mission as, my mission is to disappear. It might be, it's a strange answer. But in the sense that, as a bishop, I exist to lead to Jesus Christ, to show Jesus Christ, to make Jesus Christ known. So what brings me the most joy is when I see people discovering Jesus Christ. This brings me joy, whatever the way they went to Jesus Christ. And I have a, what inspires me a lot is John the Baptist, who says at one point in the, in the Gospel, in the Bible, I, I need to diminish so that you will grow. I need to diminish so that Jesus Christ, the presence of Jesus Christ will grow in people's lives. Because that's really what inspires me, what animates me. This is very inspiring, Bishop Okin. Thank you for sharing your personal experience. And you know, I think I have found all the seven gifts. Wisdom, understanding, fortitude, counsel, knowledge, piety, fear of the Lord. I'm impressed. Really, you, you are in the, in the understanding and you're ready for a confirmation. And thank you for everything that you've learned, that you're witnessing uh, to me also. Uh, and you're ready so to be witness to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Bishop Lupin. And after the confirmation, what would be my mission? It's a basic question, very important question. Somehow the answer is uh, simple, but at the same time complex, but it's because it's about your life and our lives together and uh, so be receiving the sacrament of confirmation you don't you're still baptized you don't stop being baptized being baptized means you're a child of god and uh, you're loved by god but growing you want you don't want to keep it for yourself you you want the world around you to know that god loves them discovering that god loves you brings you so much joy that you, you want to share it, you want to share the joy, you want to share the, the knowledge that God is love. And so growing, and with the sacrament of confirmation, it gives you the gifts to help you, sustain you, prepare you, equip you with the capacity to witness to the love of God. And so, and it is in all fields of your life, it will be in your family, it will be in uh, school, in society, in the world of work, a church, everywhere, how to be an instrument of the peace of Jesus Christ, how to share the love of God wherever you are. So being that's your, that will be your mission, that is your mission through confirmation. But it's not only a mission that you have where you left with own strengths, no, because we're all human beings with our own frailties. But uh, you have a rich heart. You, your heart is generous, and God wants to be in your heart to guide you and strengthen you and help you and guide you and uh, to be an instrument of his love in the world. And this cathedral, always welcome. It's a place where you can come to pray to, uh, for adoration, to invoke the Holy Spirit, to meet other people. Because uh, the, the, I would say the world, the church needs you. The world needs you, needs your love, needs your gifts, needs your presence, needs your involvement. But also we all need each other. We, our gifts are different, we complement each other. So together with the grace of Jesus Christ, we're called with the gift of the Holy Spirit. We're called to witness to the love of God in the church, in the world, in the society, in every family. So it's a, it's a tall mission, it's a great mission. It's a mission that God uh, gives you because he wants to fulfill your heart with his love. Well, as for the founders of Montreal, they really put into practice the gifts they needed to realize their mission. We could also say that Montreal was founded by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 
This is very inspiring. Thank you, Bishop of Pink, for sharing all this with me. As you as you say, it's a beautiful story, and it's the story that keep that keeps going on. So, and now it's your turn to bear the love of Jesus Christ into the world. Uh, we all need the love of God, and certainly the the world we live in right now needs to discover more and more the love of God. So, uh, may the joy of God fill your heart, and may you find joy in bringing the love of Jesus Christ to water around you in Thank the family you. and in the world. Thank you so much, Bishop of Pink, and best wishes for your mission. Pleasure. Mom, I found the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, and I discovered the history of Montreal. And guess what? Bishop of Pink himself guided me through my research. That's great. That's great. Thank you so much. It was a privilege, really. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The vocation of Montreal was to make known the love of God. The pioneers were animated by the thirst to make known the love of God in the world. This is a really beautiful mission. I also want to pursue this mission.